Ada for accepting a ride home with a male colleague, unhappy BF? Summary, I, F26, accepted a ride home with a colleague, M40+, plus, BF, M28, not happy. I accepted a car ride to the nearest station from a colleague after our whole school staff meeting that ended at 5 p.m. My walk to the station usually takes 30 minutes as I avoid the 15-minute route after sunset as it is not lit and is unsafe. Once in the car, my colleague said that he could drop me off near home as he drives that way anyway. I said that I was happy for him to drop me to the station as I didn't want to inconvenience him. He insisted and said that it would not be extending his journey. I accepted as I had no excuse I could give to say no, but knew this would cause problems with my BF. On the journey he was telling me about his wife and child, how he's finding the teaching career, his plans to complete a PhD and possibly work abroad at some point, generic conversation. Usually, I call my partner, of six years, when I am on my way to the station. I didn't call as I always find it awkward to stop someone talking to make a call or message. I knew my BF would call anyway, or be angry if I texted to say I am in the car with a male colleague. I wanted to let him know I had taken this ride from a male colleague once I arrived home. My BF called twice, I did not answer as I was afraid he'd be angry, and my colleague was mid-conversation about how he is struggling in his career. I called my BF back and he asked if I was in a car, it was very silent whereas the train usually isn't, I, of course, said yes. He asked whose car it was and I told him the name. He asked who this person was. I didn't feel comfortable explaining right in front of said person so stated that I would speak to him when I'm home. He responded saying yes, we will definitely have a conversation when you're home. He does not know this colleague as he is simply a colleague, not a friend, and not someone I often speak to or about. My BF then calls again to ask when I'll be arriving home. I tell him I'll be around 15 minutes. He sounds angry and I know he is wanting to wait outside my house to see who I am arriving with. I then message my BF the exact time I am arriving as my colleague said he'd drop me to my street. My BF responds saying he needs to have a word with me. Once we reach my street, I can see my boyfriend standing outside his car, pretending to be on the phone, or possibly recording. He approaches the car as I'm getting out and looks inside to see the driver. He says oh was she ill, didn't feel well? But proceeds to shake my colleague's hand and say thank you for dropping my girlfriend. As my colleague drives off, my BF expresses how unhappy he is. We get home and he continues to say how wrong this all was, that I should have told him I was getting into a man's car. He is angry that he does not know this man and that I took a ride with him. I said that I felt it would be okay as he is a family man, always polite and respectful, and is a generally nice person. My BF says that my problem is that I think everyone is nice but they aren't, that if I had gotten or m.rd.r.d, he'd have had no idea. But I think that he's too cynical and needs to understand that some people do nice things for others with no ulterior motive or self-interest, simply because they want to help. I don't think he believes this is the case. I said I had issue with the fact that he wouldn't expect me to tell him if I took a ride with a woman but I must tell him if it's a man. I stated I'd be happy for a woman from work to drop him home if it made his commute easier. He said I shouldn't be annoyed if he does the same as me and gets into a car with a random woman. He was angry that anyone from his family could have seen me in the car with his colleague. I said that this shouldn't be a problem. Context, his mother got angry at me for sitting in the car with his father, her husband, without her, to pick my BF from work one time as she felt disrespected. I saw him as a father so didn't understand why this could be wrong. I feel that there's no way my BF will know or has to know every single man I ever come across. I didn't feel I should have to say no to a ride from fear of his anger or because he feels disrespected and so took my colleague up on the offer. I've always said no to rides, even when it would be convenient for me and not an inconvenience to the person offering, from fear of exactly this situation. He stated he wants me to be sorry and to never do this again. I refuse to apologize because I don't feel I have done anything wrong, apart from not communicating straight away. I didn't want to make a dishonest apology. He continued to be angry with me the entire evening and has now not messaged me today. I have messaged to apologize and stated that I shouldn't have taken the ride. Ada? I understand I should have answered the call straight away but I knew it would be a problem and didn't want him angry on the phone in front of my colleague, but am I really in the wrong? Is there something wrong with me for not understanding why this is a normal and non-toxic response? I said he was being toxic and he didn't agree and said we're in a relationship and maybe I don't understand what it is to be in a relationship. Sorry this is so long and not the most fluent or grammatically correct piece of writing, I wrote it very quickly. Thank you for reading. I 39F am afraid of my husband 39M because he reminds me of my father and I'm not sure how to get over it or if it's even possible. I 39F have been with my husband 39M since we were 17. A little backstory of my father. My father in my eyes is a very scary person. Grew up in a dangerous neighborhood and was part of a gang until he met my mom. He has spent time in prison for a violent crime that I do not know the details of. Growing up he was abusive at times. 
when he spoke everyone in my home would shut up and listen, he was not afraid of getting physical and would resort to it if we, my siblings and I, did something bad. He never laid a f.ng.r or raised his voice at my mother. He was an emotionally absent man but to his credit, he made sure everyone was able to get ahead. My father is a man with few words and even fewer facial expressions, always having a cold serious look on him which made it very hard to approach him. He wasn't a friendly person either. He was as strict and demanding as a commanding officer. You can not joke with him or even show a shred of joy around him because he would shoot it down in an instant. I have never seen him smile, not once, not ever. I to this day I'm afraid to look my father in the eyes because he might take it as disrespect and I do not want to be at the end of that stick. I met my husband at the trade school we were both attending. I was studying to be an electrician while my husband was studying to be a framer slash welder. You can say I fell for him because he struck me as very interesting yet familiar. He always spoke in a serious tone and very short phrases, and his facial expression stayed serious and bland. He had a resting BTH face. He was very sweet to me and never mistreated me. We would usually go on dates and talk about how our trades were going. I would usually go to his gym where he was training as a boxer to hang out with him. When he met my father, it was almost as if he was his long lost son. It was scary just how similar they behaved. They were both mean looking and physically built. My mom even thought that maybe he had a mistress somewhere. No I have met both his parents and there is no deep family secret or in. St. My father and my husband did not say a word to each other, they only looked at each other in silence. I tried to break the ice by telling my father a bit about my husband but he slammed his hand on the table and told me not to interrupt them, that the men were talking. My husband told him not to speak to me like that in front of him. I and everyone in my family who was present were dumbfounded, scared, and stood frozen in place. Almost as if we were waiting for the world to end. My mother even stopped washing the dishes. That's how tense the house got. For the first time I saw my father smile and he told my husband I like you and shook his hand. We got married one year later when we were 21. They do hang out without me present and drink a B, R in silence from time to time. My father has not said it aloud to him but has told my mom that he really likes him. Since then we have had two teenage sons. My husband is very strict with them and usually handles the discipline when the boys act up or get in trouble. He does talk to them first and gives them multiple lectures and explanations on why their behavior is not okay but if that doesn't work he will resort to physical discipline as a last resort. Like my father, he is the be all and end all. The house freezes when he speaks. I do get shaken up when he gets up to tell them off for disrespecting me or acting out of line. He does physically punish them whenever they act up or step out of line. I get very scared when we have a disagreement because of how he looks at me, he doesn't raise his voice nor has he ever raised his hand but just the weight of his presence gives me anxiety. He does not insult me or speak to me in any ill manner, he just stands there looking at me while just listening to me. When my husband gets home from work tired I keep thinking that he will yell at his kids for the chores that they didn't do or if he got a call from school. I get very nervous when he gets home tired because I think of what my father would do. He would punish us for not helping around the house or because he got a call from school. My husband just tells my kids to help around the house more and doesn't raise his voice. I know it sounds sd.p.d. But everything my husband does reminds me of my father. He has not done anything wrong but I cannot shake the fear of my father out. I know I married him knowing that he was like my father but it scares me. I keep thinking of my father and what he would do. It's like I cannot stop comparing my husband to him and thinking my husband is gonna be as brutal as my father. I have told my husband that I feel very afraid of him and ever since he has not been sleeping in the house, he has stayed in his truck to sleep and would only come in to shower, eat, and sh.t. I have told him to come back inside but he says that his truck is comfortable and to not worry. That he will go back when I feel safe with him. I honestly feel like absolute garbage for that. It all came to a head two weeks ago when me and my children were having a heated argument about school and my oldest told me to shut up. My husband was in the dining room eating and slammed his hand against the table which made me jump and I automatically apologized to him for disturbing his meal. He walked past me and walked up to my son. He smacked him in the mouth and told him to say it again. To tell me to shut up again in front of him. It reminded me so much of my father that I just broke down and walked away. He apologized to me for giving me another reason to be scared of him and went back to his truck. I love my husband but I cannot handle how much he reminds me of my father. I have spoken to my friends about it and they have all suggested that I divorce him since I do not feel safe and comfortable being around him. He has done me no wrong once so ever but I am very afraid of him. It's like I'm walking on eggshells whenever I am with him. I have loved this man for the longest but I do not know. I feel like I am being selfish and I'm just self-sabotaging myself. I feel terrible for what I have made him think he needs to do. I would like to hear others' opinions. I have been in therapy for years but it has not been working. Edit, I know people are going to wonder why I even married him and had kids with him. I love him, but I cannot explain my feelings or reasoning behind this. No explanation would satisfy anyone here. Edit number 2, my husband and I do talk to our kids first whenever they act up or get into serious trouble. 
My husband does sit down and has long talks with them first before. I made it seem like he just goes straight into physical discipline. I have asked him to not be too harsh on them and he has agreed to give them a few more chances to change and learn from their mistakes. I 36M accidentally got my ex-wife 28F pregnant and she wants to keep it, and I don't but I'm being guilted by her and possibly my parents. How should I handle this? As the title says I, 36M, got my ex-wife, 28F, pregnant by mistake and I need advice. My ex-wife and I married about 4 years ago and remain married for 2 years before we split. The split was amicable for the most part but afterwards besides a little talk here and there we mostly stayed out of each other's lives. My ex-wife is from a different country than the country we currently reside in so after the divorce she decided to stay and slowly build up her life here. She has done well and come far but still has some ways to go to be truly stable. I was in a relationship that ended a few months ago and was in the middle of recovering from that heartbreak when my ex I began to speak more frequently. For the most part it was because she needed help with her immigration process and us being on amiable terms I had no problem helping her because she usually busy working multiple jobs, and going to school. So this brings things to the mistake, during the time of reconnect we started become a little flirty with each other but we both made it clear we would never get back with each other that we worked better this way as just friends. So one night I'm feeling down from my previous breakup and she reaches out to me we flirt for a bit and then she propositions for a no strings attached hookup that same night. I agree to it as we're both single at this point and have been getting along well as friends. I ask her if she is on birth control if not I'll get some c.nd.miz. She says no birth control but not to worry she can use plan b that she will handle it as she prefers the feeling without a c.nd.m. We talk a bit more about this as I make doubly sure if she is okay with that and the fact that taking plan b might cause her a few days of discomfort, but she insists it's fine she doesn't want to use c.nd.miz. We both agree that we don't want pregnancy to occur between us it would be a huge mistake as we are not together and don't plan on ever being together like that again. We both would like to marry others in the future and have children under those conditions. So again she ensures she will handle it with plan B if necessary. In the end I still purchase c.nd.ms before meeting up with her. I pick her up we and we go to a hotel. We go into the hotel but I forget the c.nd.ms in the car as I'm carrying hers and my stuff inside. Skip forward we start to get hot and heavy and I mention going back to get the c.nd.ms she says no no it's fine I'll use plan B well we did the thing. She used the plan B the day after so I'm told, I wasn't able to stick around to validate that as I had to run off to work early the next day. But two and a half weeks later she calls me and tells me she's tested positive for pregnancy. Right away I'm thinking okay you caught it very early the obvious thing to do is to terminate it. This is where the problem starts, after giving my desire to abort she immediately hangs up on me and refused to talk to me for hours. When we talk again she says I'm crazy to even mention abortion and even implies I'm a monster and not only that I start to feel she is trying to manipulate me into how to feel about the situation. I realize that what she wants is for me to say oh you're pregnant now let's get back together and start a family. This is the absolute last thing I want and I was clear to her at the start of our reconnect as friends. She refused to meet with me in person to discuss all our possible options, she wouldn't even speak to me on the phone, she was only willing to communicate with me through text and she says if I mention abortion she won't talk to me at all, because I feel she is not handling this like an ad.lt. And because she is not speaking to me about such a major thing, I do become very upset. Forced to only be able to text her how I feel and that I absolutely do not want to have a baby with her, because of my anger and her refusal to have a real conversation with me about this I think my words were a bit harsh in my text messages which cause her to pull away from communicating with me even more. This wasn't the best thing to do but at this point I was feeling betrayed by her on how she was handling the situation, and slightly betrayed because she told me this wouldn't happen that she would handle it with a plan B somehow that didn't work but it's so early she should be able to take the abortion pill if she was okay to take plan B. Instead of engaging with me she childishly texts my parents to inform them of the situation. I believe she was hoping that by getting my parents involved this would somehow help her get what she wants. After a week of this the only way I can get her to have a real conversation with me in person is if I have my parents there during the talk as she became fond of my parents when we were married. During the talk I tell her that in under no circumstances do I want to raise a baby with her, and that she should really consider all options because her current situation is in no way good enough just yet to being a child into. She's still new to this country and working multiple jobs 7 days a week to build her life and has not completed her immigration process. She is also currently living with multiple roommates. For the most part she doesn't have much of family or close friends here to help her. I feel it's very selfish of her to bring a child into this situation, but she says it will all work out. Some of the reasons I hear is that she feels she old at 28 and she wants to have a baby. She is also very religious which is part of the reason of her freaking out about the word abortion but she been doing all these other unreligious things such as premarital making love. So it's weird that it's now a big issue. I tell her that she knew I did not want this and due to her situation the best option is to terminate the pregnancy while it's still so early. At this point only 3 weeks. 
I told her if she decides to keep it I won't be involved besides for child support which even that I don't feel is fair. She will be a single mom, which in her current situation I feel will make her life incredibly difficult and be unfair to a child, but now that she has gotten my parents involved in this I feel like she and now slightly even my parents are trying to guilt trip me into one maybe consider getting back with her or at least share custody with her and raise the baby. I don't want a baby right now, I'm in the middle of my own situation and my own plans, and made this very clear from the start. The fact is that we both should have the choice, okay she wants to keep the baby it's her body her choice but shouldn't I have a choice of my life my choice, without having to have this forced guilt. I would be more understanding if we didn't have the options we have, and the fact that it is so early. It's her decision to keep it knowing full well I do not want to be part of it. In that case I feel all responsibility of this decision and child resides on her besides the financial obligations I might have. She is choosing to become a single mom in an unstable situation. Her and to a degree my parents have no right to paint me as some sort of bad guy in this situation. I feel my parents might try to if she gets herself into a bad situation in the future and the child sufferers, I'll be the one everyone wants to blame. How should I proceed in handling this? Edit. Of course I will financially support the child. But I'm getting this guilt that I need to be fully involved in supporting her also. She is trying to use guilt in order to get me to do that and possibly use my parents too. GF's landlord is quiet the pain in the A. Need some advice, California. Landlord Tenant Housing I've never seen such mistreatment and straight up lies from a landlord to a tenant that takes such good care of their place. This has been causing so much distress, she is diagnosed with CPTSD and they are aware, to my girlfriend that she quit her job, thinks everyone is against her in the complex, even tenants, and can't find any balance slash direction in day to day life. It's see to get me seeing her go through this and I want to end this. I need to know if I am wasting time trying to push back or if this is a fight worth fighting for. This is a long one. Her move in date was September 1st, and there were two units open. The first was showed online that she wanted but someone was also applying so my girl got the second. It was weird because the landlord refused to show her the other unit. We saw it later and it was much cleaner and just felt better. The landlord seemed like he failed to do any sort of inspections before having her move in and didn't give a tour of the place. We weren't together at the time so she was alone getting her first place as a single woman. About six days into living there she was tired of a constant smell of rot coming from the bathroom and uncovered mounds of trash, glah, and used c.nd.ms, etc. There was mold in some of the drawers, stated in the rental agreement, but nothing was ever done about this. The screen door was broken and didn't lock properly. The fridge had mold, and looked like the underneath that wasn't swept in six years, it hadn't been. She mentioned this to the landlord, and was just ignored for the most part. The screen door was fixed but it didn't need a fix it needed to be replaced with the right size door. The next issue was the hot water going out. This was a back and forth, have you checked the pilot light landlord and my girlfriend having three different people including myself look and could tell it wasn't a pilot issue. Finally we found out what the issue was, he failed to mention that the gas was a bill that she needed to sign up for in the first month was previously paid for by the last tenants, showing they rushed her in. I learned this by going to the gas meter myself and seeing that it was off. It took almost two weeks of back and forth until we had to find this out ourselves. Called the gas company. They came to turn it on, there was a gas leak and this unit was the only one on an old gas system and not their new one. The landlord finally started working with us on trying to get the problem solved. One day one of the contractors showed up early and we were not able to remotely get him in on time but he was able to come later that day. The landlord holds this over her head and says that this whole issue was her fault and she dragged it on. Finally after about a month and a half of no hot water, heater, stove, and oven. The issue was fixed, however the contracts had to drill in all the cabinets and mess the drawers in the kitchen up. They said they would come fix them and they still haven't. Next, the heater just straight up didn't work. I told my girlfriend it was an issue with the wiring to the thermostat and she informed the handyman on site, and it took, again, over a month for anything to be done about it. Not the biggest issue in my eyes, but something that is a right in California from what I'm reading, we are in Orange County. During this there comes a leak that caused water build up to bubble up in the selling, the leak was fixed but the water damage remains there. While the handyman was there fixing the heater I asked him if the other units had this many issues and he said I'm so surprised she has stayed so long, I would have been gone instantly. In my 10 years of doing this I have never seen so many issues at a place. He then informed us that another unit just got moved out of and we should get a transfer there for all the problems that we have had. So my girl immediately checked it out, felt much better with the energy of the place and called the landlord. He said that it was all hers, she would have to pay more though which she was fine with. She even offered to sign a new rental agreement, to make it easier as this is a month by month complex and she was ready to get the heck out of the place that never was able to feel like her home. We then waited to hear back from the landlord only to hear the news that they rented it to someone else already and I guess that is why he ignored her texts. Turns out it wasn't this. 
the new issue was the owners, IFLP owns the property, IA, a made that they are family or connected with the management company because the FLP and management company only have properties tied to each other, said that they did not want to do any sort of complex transfers. She pushed him back, by expressing her feelings of not being heard, felt discriminated against as he always talked down to her, and his response was sorry you feel that way, don't text me anymore please use our portal for this request. So she did what he asked, two weeks of no response, during this leaks started happening in the bathroom sink. No replies. She talked to one of the property managers, and was informed that no one was applying to the open units, there were three at this point, and we were never informed that there were any other options than the one that my girl asked for. She then reached out to another agent in the management company who said she didn't handle rentals, or the complex in general, this was a lie as her neighbor is in constant contact with this agent about her unit. So she reached back out to her landlord, after being ignored for two weeks and was told the unit was rented out and there is nothing he can do as the owners don't want to transfer, but has failed to tell them about any of the issues of the place. No sympathy at all for someone who he knows has had the worst luck with a unit he should want to take care of. I talked to the landlord's mom, the president of their company, today, and she said that we have been Hara, ing him, know the answer, and there is nothing they are willing to do. She kept saying transfer units while we never once said anything about transferring, it was signing a new rental agreement. I brought up the fact that he ignored her after his mom said that she needed to use the portal for these claims, after this she said she was done playing games and hung up the phone. Other notable concerns about the place, the windows are the wrong size and if you push up on them they can be taken out, safety, cabinets are filthy and need to be highly cleaned or replaced, many outlets are not working so power trips often, mold still being found, and issues, the only unit that floods when it rains, and probably more to come when we get an inspector out there to check the place out. Now I'm here. She has been very civil, very respectable to the staff and tenants in the community, and doesn't deserve any of this treatment. Why would someone else be able to recently full-on transfer units while she can't even reapply and get the unit she wants in order to feel at ease? All she wants is either to break the agreement early without penalties, or get the new unit and pay more. I am pushing her to get compensation but it has been so stressful for her she wants it to be over fast and not dragged on. I'm willing to do all of that myself while getting her to a new place but just need some advice if this is something that we can push or not. If photos slash videos are needed let me know and I will upload them. Thanks in advance.